يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال الله تعالى في كتاب الكريم من سورة آل عمران بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون صدق الله العظيم فإن خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محتثاتها وكل محتثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار We begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asking for his forgiveness and we seek refuge in Allah from our evil deeds and the evils within our own selves for whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides none can lead astray and whomsoever is misled none can guide and we bear witness and we testify with full belief and with no hesitation that the only deity worthy of worship alone is Allah. And we bear witness and we testify with full belief and with no hesitation that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is his final messenger and prophet. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Quran, O you who believe, O you who have iman, have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he is deserving of it. And die not in state, of, in, state, in state of total and complete submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Islam. Verily, the best of words are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, and the best of guidance is the guidance of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We praise and we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly and continuously. We praise Him and we thank Him for all the uncountable blessings that He has given us. As He tells us in the Quran, بَعْدَ أَعُودُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ وَأَسْبَغَ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعَمَهُ ظَاهِرَةً وَبَاطِنَا Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that He says, I have unleashed my uncountable blessings upon you. Those that you see and those that you don't see. So we praise and we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all of the blessings that He has given us. The ones that we see, the ones that we don't see. The ones that we know of, the ones that we don't know of. The ones we remember and the ones that we don't remember. We praise and we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this month that we are in. For this day that we are in. This month, one of the blessed months that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about. This blessed month of Rajab. And this blessed day of Friday, the best of days where the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, told us that the Jum'ah to Jum'ah is a maghfirah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I ask and I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes each and every one of us amongst the people that gain his maghfirah today. <clears throat> this day or this month that the companions used to look forward to, the companions and the tabi'oon and all of the saraf, they used to look forward to these months. Why? Because they were, they're the holy months that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about. But also, it, they're the months that lead into Ramadan. And some of the salaf, they used to make a dua. That Allahumma barik lana fi rajab wa sha'ban wa balighna Ramadan. That Ya Allah, put barakah in rajab this month and next month sha'ban. And allow us to live to Ramadan. Now quickly, this word barakah itself, because oftentimes when we talk about it, it's just, oh yeah, blessings. That's all it is. It's just about blessings. But subhanAllah, barakah is actually so much more than that. And the scholars of language, they actually say, al-barakatu wa namau wa ziyada. That barakah is that it's something that you, you, put, you put something in there and you get more than you expected from it. You get more than you expected, but it's still not too much. To understand it, you have to look at where it comes from. So look at, look at it as you have a seed. Now if you plant one seed and you put it into the ground, what are you expecting? One plant. Now I want you to imagine that you put one seed inside of the ground and you get three plants. That's barakah. But also it's much more than that. Because the word barakah itself comes from the word barka, which is the word that the old Arabs used to use for when a sandstorm was coming and a camel would just sit in its place. So it wouldn't sway, so it wouldn't be tipped over. So you know if you've ever seen like on, like on the news or on YouTube or something, you see a sandstorm, it's, it's really, it's vicious. And what happens, the, the camel just sits in its place and it doesn't move. It doesn't sway, it doesn't move at all. So the scholars, they actually say, well, how, what this has to do with barakah is that for any one of us that used to play with building blocks or Legos, you know that you can keep building and building and stacking and stacking and stacking and stacking, and then what happens if you stack too much? It starts to tip over. 
So it's not necessarily that you keep getting more and that's a better thing. Sometimes too much isn't a good thing. But this word barakah, it's that you get something. But it's more than you expect, but not only more than you expect, but it's not more than you can handle. So it's exactly as much as you can handle. So the salaf, they used to make this dua to fill this month and the next month with barakah. With blessings. But just not, just little, no, 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 more blessings than you even expect. But not more blessings than we can handle. This, these months, and this month of Ramadan, they are an excellent and a great opportunity. One of the greatest opportunities that we have to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the purposes of Jum'ah, of this day, besides it being Eid, besides it being a day of celebration where we're happy and we smile at each other, it's also as to serve as a reminder to bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what I want to do, I want to take a couple points inshallah to try and bring myself first and foremost, and then inshallah all of us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the easiest ways to get close to someone, whenever you're trying to get, you know, you're like, I want to know that guy. You go up to him and what do you do? You ask his name. You ask his name and when you get that name, you have like a sense of who that person is. You, get, you feel a little bit closer to them. So we look to the most beautiful names. The most beautiful names belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what I want to do, I want to take a few of these names and inshallah go over them. And in an attempt that myself and all of us can get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by knowing his names and by knowing his attributes. The first name that I want to go over, Ismillah ta'ala, Al-Wadud. One of the most beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Wadud. When we look at the translation of this word, it says the most loving. And well, you know, that, that's part of it, but it's, it's, a li it's, limita it's limiting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not giving us the full picture. Because, you know, if I'm, for instance, loving, and you say, oh, yeah, that's a loving guy, what do you say? You say he's al Habib, he's Habib, right? That he, he's a loving guy, he's Habib. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala isn't al Habib, he's al Wadu. What is the difference between it? The scholars say it's the difference. The difference between it is that through your love, through that love, it's translated into action. It's translated into something tangible. I'll give you an example. I love my wife. Now I can tell her, yeah, I love you. I love you. I can just say that. Or through my love, I can do something that she likes. I can do something that I know will make her happy. Why? Because I love her. So through my love, it's translated into action. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He loves us and through His love that He has for us, He gives us all of these blessings that I started off with. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says He unleashes His uncountable blessings on us. That if you try to count and you try to encircle all the blessings of Allah, you wouldn't be able to because there's so many. There's so many of them. And because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves us, He gave them all to us. Whether we know of them, whether we don't know them. Whether we remember to thank Him for them or not, He still gives us those blessings. If you and I forgot to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for waking up today, for giving us life today, He still gave it to you, even though we didn't thank Him. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a Because He loves us. Oftentimes when, when we get around here, we have, we have a very ill mindset in that we start thinking, well, what did I do to deserve that love? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's literally given me everything. Everything I have is because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All the good things, they're all because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you know what? Man, I make mistakes. I made mistakes last night. I made mistakes on the way here. I make mistakes all the time. What did I do to deserve all of this? I'm not an angel. I'm not like the angels. Would they, they just obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and obey Him constantly. They never make mistakes. I'm not like them. What did I do to deserve that love? Because we all make mistakes. But because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-wadud, brings me to the next name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because He is al-wadud, because He loves us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also al ghafur the most forgiving. That no matter what it is that you and I do, no matter how much we slip and how much we fall and how much we forget, 
and how much we wrong ourselves because when we make sins, when we do things we're not supposed to do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala isn't affected in any way. We're the only ones that lose. We're the only ones that are affected. So at the end of the day, we're harming ourselves. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because He loves us so much, no matter what we do to wrong ourselves, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, just ask me for forgiveness. Ask me for forgiveness. Regret what you have done. Know what you've done is wrong. And just ask me for forgiveness. And it's, it's as simple as astaghfirullah. It's as simple as saying astaghfirullah. Coming to terms and understanding what you did was wrong and making an attempt to stop it and just say astaghfirullah. But sometimes we make it more complicated than it really is. We're like, you know what, I can only make it still, you know, I have to go to this special masjid, in this special place, and at this special time, during that one hour time frame, during Jum'ah, when all du'a are accepted. It's not that hard. Don't make it hard. And then we think, oh, well, you know what, how could I dare go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask Him for forgiveness for that deed that I did? It's such a bad thing that I did and I know better, but I still did it. How could I ask Allah for forgiveness? How could I? Why are we limiting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? By that mindset, we're literally saying that the sin we did is greater than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The sin we did is greater than His forgiveness. What's greater than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He is al ghafur he is the most forgiving. He forgives anything, no matter what. In the Hadith Qudsi, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is relating to us what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. And he mentions, Ya ibadi, law anna awalakum wa akhirakum wa insakum wa jinnakum. Where the, he says that it, my slaves, my servants, even if the first of you, the last of you, the jinn, the man of you and the jinn of you, the most righteous of you and the worst of you, even if all of you stood in a line from the beginning until the end, stood in a line, and each and every one of you asked me, each and every one of you asked me, and I were to give it to you, it would take nothing away from me. Just as when you dip a needle into the ocean, it takes nothing from the ocean. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can forgive you any sin. All we have to do are take the steps towards forgiveness. And at the end of the day, we are the ones who are gaining. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't get anything from us asking for maghfirah. But we are the ones who gain. But it's not only this maghfirah that we can attain from making istighfar. There's actually more and it's actually mentioned in a book by Imam Ibn al-Jawzi where he wrote a book called Manaqib Uthman or sorry, uh, Manaqib Ahmed the virtues of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal. And just to give you a, a, who Imam Ahmad was, he was the greatest scholar of his time. So much so that Imam al dhahabi says that when he passed away, when he died, and he died the ni uh, that night, the next day they were going to have his janazah. When they announced it the night before, the next day, they said over a million people came for his janazah. That the streets of Baghdad were completely full of people praying for him. So much so, they actually had to bring boats and put them on the shore so that people could pray on top of them. That's who Imam Ahmed was. He was that loved by the people. So Imam Ahmed was traveling to seek knowledge. Because that's the type of person who he was. You never stop seeking knowledge. You have to continue. So he was traveling seeking knowledge. And he could have, you know, been like, yo, I'm Imam Ahmed. He can get pretty much whatever he wants. But he didn't want that. He didn't want preferential treatment. So what he did when he was traveling around, he would try to like, cover up his face. So that people wouldn't know who he was. So he's traveling around, and eventually he gets to a point where he runs out of all of his money. He has no money left, and he's in this, this small city in Bilad al-Sham. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give the people of Bilad al-Sham ease in the hardship that they are going through. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them victory. So he was in this area of Bilad al-Sham, and he gets to a masjid. And he says, all right, look, I got no money. I was like, Maghrib time, I'm going to just chill here, inshallah, I can sleep here, and then tomorrow I can go out and you know, I can make some money, inshallah, to provide for myself. So he goes into the masjid, you know, he's there for Maghrib, stays, prays, stays in between, then he prays Isha, stays a little bit after, making a little bit more dhikr, and then the caretaker of the masjid comes to him, and he's like, yo, you got to leave, I'm closing up. He's like, but you know, I'm a traveler, I got nowhere to go, I've got no money. 
can't I just stay here tonight? I'll clean the med, whatever you need. I'll just, just let me stay tonight. I got nowhere to go. He's like, nah, you got to go. You can't stay here. Get out. He's like, but, but I got nowhere to go. Just let me stay. He's like, no, get out. So he's yelling at him. He's like, get out. I don't want to tell you again. Get out. So Malcolm's like, okay, fine. Fine. I'll go. So he goes out to the steps of the masjid, and he has his, you know, his little bag with his belongings, and he puts his head down on him, he leans on him, he's like, you know, inshallah, you know, this is, this is good, I'm out of the masjid, I'm just on the steps of the masjid, it should be alright. So he starts dozing off to sleep. And as he's dozing off to sleep, the caretaker once again comes out, he's like, man, I thought I told you to leave. He's like, but I'm not inside the masjid anymore, I'm outside. He's like, no, get out, you can't stay here. He's like, but come on, right here, the steps, like for real, I can't just stay here. He's like, get out. The caretaker is getting really frustrated, so frustrated to the point, he grabs his bag and he throws it into the street. Then he grabs Imam Ahmed by his feet and drags him off of the steps. Now, the whole, the whole time during this, Imam Ahmed could have just been like, yo, I'm Imam Ahmed. You better recognize who I am. You can't talk to me like this. He could have said that, but he didn't. And the whole time, across the street from the masjid, there was a bakery. And there was the guy who owned it, and he looked, and he saw everything. So he comes to Imam Ahmed after this, he's like, look, I'm going to be in my bakery all night cooking, so I'm going to be up all night anyways. You're more than welcome to stay in my bakery. It's a little warm, but um, you can stay, no problem. So Imam Ahmed, thank you. Thank you for letting me stay. So he stays with him. And he's just, he starts observing this guy. And the whole time, you know, he's making his dough and everything, and the whole time, just The whole night, the whole night, and right before Fajr, Imam Ahmed's like, man, I gotta ask this guy. He's like, man, I've been looking at you. And the whole time, all you're doing is astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Most people, you know, when they're like making dhikr, eventually like they get tired. Like they, like it, it's weary and he's doing work, but he's like, for you, it looks like you're getting more energy. You know, he didn't have like an iPod to keep him awake or anything like that. All he had was astaghfirullah and he was just doing, he's like, man, you, you're like, you look like you're getting more awake and more energy as you're doing it. Like, how do you do this? He's like, you know what? SubhanAllah, as I found myself saying, Astaghfirullah, 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 he's like, you know, I find I have more energy. But also, I find that anytime I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something, He gives it to me. Imam Ahmed is surprised. He says, anything you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, He gives it to you? He says, yeah. Except one thing. Imam Ahmed is curious, so he's like, so it's the one thing you never got. So this man, he tells him, he's like, you know, when I was having financial difficulty, I asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he helped me out. When my business was in trouble, I asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he helped me out. But I once made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to learn from one particular imam. His name is Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal. But he hasn't, made, he hasn't accepted my dua yet. When Imam Ahmed hears this, the man, he starts crying and he goes and he hugs the man as tight as he could. And he said, SubhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put me in this situation where I had to be dragged by my feet just so your dua could be accepted. Why? Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. My brothers and sisters, when we make istighfar, we are the ones that win. We are the ones that gain. And it's a way of coming closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is one of the greatest blessings that we can have, especially in these months and especially in the month coming. Allahumma ballighna Ramadan, aqulu qawli hadha, wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fastaghfiru, innahu huwa al-ghafoor al-rahim. Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه أما بعد. My brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa taala gives us many opportunities to get closer to Him and to know Him. And it's through getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa taala and through getting to know Him that our lives become easier and that our lives become better. We are the ones that benefit from coming to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there's a great opportunity that all of you have, inshallah, in this community. I was told that there will be, inshallah, a banquet on May 9th with some great scholars who are coming to teach, inshallah, and get us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So 
I would encourage, inshallah, all of us to take the opportunity to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by all means that He makes available to us. The last one that I will go over as a means of getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reading His book. Is reading the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Knowing and understanding that actually the Qur'an are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking directly to you and I. He is speaking to us, knowing what He wants from us, knowing what He is saying to you and I. And subhanAllah, we often make every excuse in the book of why not to read His book. We, are, we make so many excuses like, oh well, you know, Ramadan is the month of Ramadan, Ramadan is the, uh, the month of Quran, so I'll just read it then. No, we have to read it throughout the year, not only in Ramadan. We have to increase our reading in Ramadan, and inshallah, it translates over to the rest of the year. But we make every roadblock to ourselves. We make every excuse, exclu- excuse to ourselves to not read the Quran. You know what? It's hard. I don't have time. Brother, I don't know Arabic. I don't know how to read, man. I can't do that. Why should I do it? it like, it's just so hard. I want to, inshallah, say two hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Two hadith that are a means of encouragement for myself first and foremost, and then to all of you, to read the Qur'an, to get closer to the Qur'an. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that every letter you read from the Qur'an, you get a hasanat. Every single letter. And that those hasanats are multiplied. And then the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, just to make it clear, he said, Alif harf, wa lam harf, wa mim harf. So it's not that, oh yeah, it's just the whole word. No, 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 no. Every single letter we are rewarded for. Now I want you to think of just Surah Al-Fatiha. I don't know how many letters are in Surah Al-Fatiha, but it's a lot. Think of all of the hasanat that we get just for reciting Surah Al-Fatiha. Okay, fine, we get a lot of reward. That doesn't negate the fact that it's still hard. It's hard. Arabic is a hard language. It's hard to get a, get a hang of it. It is. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in a beautiful hadith narrated by Aisha radiallahu anha where the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Al-mahiru bil-Qur'ani ma'a safara al-kiram in barara. That the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that the expert in the Qur'an, he is on par and on the same level of the most noble and high angels. Remember we were talking about the angels earlier, they don't make any mistakes, right? They're always worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the expert in the Qur'an is on par with the most noble of angels. Now, that begs the question, it's like, man, I'm, I'm no expert in the Qur'an. I thought you said this was supposed to be motivation. I'm no expert in the Qur'an. But the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu continues. He says, That the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu says, And whomsoever recites it and reads it, and he stumbles and slips, and it, he struggles with it, like the word itself, yata a hard word to say, a tongue twister, especially when your throat is dry. It's hard to say. So he said, whoever slips and struggles and it's hard for them, but they still do it, lahu ajran. They get twice the reward. But then the question comes, twice the reward of what? The scholars of hadith say that they get twice the reward of the first person, the one who's on par with the most noble of angels. My brothers and sisters, when we struggle and when we try to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when the Qur'an is hard for us to, to read and to get a hang of, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts double the reward in it for us. Double the reward of the expert in the Qur'an who is on par with the most noble and highest of angels. So I ask and I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows each and every one of us to truly come closer to Him. And I ask and I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes each and every one of us amongst the people who constantly and continuously make attempts to get closer to Him. And I ask and I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts barakah in this month of Rajab, 
in the next month of Sha'ban and allows us to live to Ramadan, live through Ramadan, and gain all of its blessings and all of its maghfira. عباد الله إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم اللهم إن نعوذ بك من الهم والحزن ونعوذ بك من العجز والكسل ونعوذ بك من الجبن والبخل ونعوذ بك من غلبة الدين وقهل الرجال اللهم آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكر الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما